Uh, as I mentioned before, if you don't mind, if you can turn on your video, we would appreciate it and include your first and last name uh, in your, your Zoom name uh, and, and add your high school grad year to that too. That would be great. I, I have not added my high school grad year because well, it would be a strange number for you to look at. So I, I, won't, I won't add that in there, but uh, I would ask that you would do that for us so we'll know who we're, who we're talking with. It's great to have you here. Uh, we have a, a great program put together. We have a number of hood people around the screen that uh, we'll introduce to you and you're gonna hear from. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started here in a moment after I have a chance to introduce everybody. Uh, in, in no particular order, uh, I will introduce these folks to you because these are folks that will be answering questions for you as, as our event goes on and, uh, and we'll also uh, be leading some of the sections of, uh, of our event. So uh, around the screen, Peyton Mills, she'll wave at you. Uh, Peyton is the one that you have probably been sending things to. You may not know. That's where a lot of your information goes uh, and, and communication back often comes through her as well. So she helps coordinate uh, a lot of our visits. Uh, working our way around the screen, at least for me, Amy Warren is here. Amy's waving at you. She's one of our admissions counselors, uh, and she's going to be answering a lot of questions in the chat, uh, which I will take this moment to say, if you do have questions through the, through the event, you can use the chat to ask those questions. You can uh, type those in, uh, and they will be answered either there or, if you are so brave, unmute yourself, and you can say, excuse me, I have a question, uh, and, uh, and, and we can answer it that way as well. So it's up to you, but uh, make sure that you get your questions uh, extended to us so we can answer them for you. Also working around the screen is India Dennis, India Wave. Uh, actually, this is interesting. All three of these folks are alum of Hood, uh, and so and we're not going to stop with that. But but these three are alums of Hood. India is going to be guiding your your campus tour a little bit later in the event, uh, and we'll also be available to answer a lot of questions. And then working again around the screen, we have Biz Gomer. Uh, Biz is one of our associate directors of, of admission and she coordinates a lot of the communication and events for, for us as well. And she will, is also available to answer questions. And then last but, but not least, one of the hood people around the screen is Dr. Jerry Van Winter. Uh, he's our associate uh, professor in the business department, and we'll be telling you all the all the good, exciting, fun, uh, and and uh, great stuff about our business program and answering questions about that. So that is and so presentation and Q and A is going to happen as well. I will be here as well through the program. Again, my name is Bill Brown and I'm the Vice President for Enrollment. It's great to have you here. We want you to ask lots of questions um, and, uh, and don't leave if you have any questions remaining. But if you do and the, a question pops into your head at some point later on, please let us know. You can email us um, and send us a message. You can do that through our website uh, or directly to, to, to respond to some of the emails that you've been getting and we'll answer those questions and get you more information as you need it. Very good. Well, with that, we'll, and, there, and, and Peyton is giving you the email address in, in, in the chat so you can uh, send the answers there. All right, we'll flip it over to Dr. Van Winter to take it away with the business program. All right, thank, thank you very much, Bill. Uh, again, I'm, I'm Dr. Jerry Van Winter. I'm a marketing professor here at Hood, but I'm also the chair of the business program and the director of the Integrated Marketing Communications Program. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about all those uh, programs and majors. Um, my goal for the day is just to kind of give you, a, you know, the, the big picture, look at the business program, and then answer every question that you could possibly have. Um, at some point, we'll also be putting a slide up. They'll have my contact information. So you could always just email me with any questions that like, kind of pop up over the rest of the summer or next, next semester. Um, when time allows, we'd love to have students drop by and visit the, our offices as well. So. Oh, there it is. So that, that's anyone, you can always reach me at that email address. Um, yeah. One of the, um, 
things. I, first thing, big picture I wanted to kind of talk to you about was, I think it was early last spring, I had two parents come in with uh, their daughter and they were looking at Hood College and they had already kind of committed to Hood College. And, and so the dad's like, what's the one thing my daughter should, you know, really concentrate on as soon as she gets a hood? And he seemed really tense and it seemed to be like he was making his daughter tense. And my answer was the one thing that she should do is relax. All right, everyone just gets too tense about a lot of these things. One of the things to remember is, you know, you don't have to know your major when you walk into college. I thought I knew my major, but then I changed it after a year, just like a lot of people. And besides nursing and education, you can always change your major, even your second year, and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, a lot of students will come to me, you know, their first year and be, be worried about that. And they'll come to me my second year and they're, they're, they're super worried. They don't know what, they're, what job they want to do. Like, they're like, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I was 40 years old before I started teaching, and, and this is the first time I'm doing something that I wanted to do, right? My career was fine. It was, uh, I got to do some fun things. I was in charge of international marketing, and I, I traveled around the world for 15 years. But it, it wasn't really in my heart what I wanted to do. So in your heart, you're going to figure it out. But don't worry if you don't know. Like I said, I, I figured out 40, and it worked. So you'll figure it out well before then. Um, so what I was hoping today is actually within the business school, there's several different majors. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk a little bit, uh, I guess the next slide, Peyton, we, it's a quick. And the only reason I put an agenda down was to keep myself on target because I, I have a tendency to, to run off course. But th this will just remind me to also talk about advising and internships because I, I could easily forget. Um, but the first thing we'll talk about is, and today we'll just kind of talk about the, the different majors within the business program. Um, and one of the things you can always remember, though, is you can double major. You know, there's uh, actually within the admissions office, there, there's a young man named Ryan that he double majored in psychology and business. Right? I think he started off with psychology, he took a business class or two, enjoyed business also. So, he, he, he double major. So you could always, you can major in two things. You can also, which is kind of rare, but you can do it. But it, it's all relatively easy to major in one field and then do a minor in another, right? I'm working with a young lady right now and she's majoring in integrated marketing communications, but what she really loves is graphic design. So she's getting a minor in graphic design and that's the kind of the career path that she's going. But that combination of marketing and graphic design is, is actually, absolutely perfect for her. Um, so there's always that kind of combination. Um, I guess Peyton will go ahead and jump. Next one. There we go. And just like kind of the way the business program works, is, is, is this kind of like everything else at Hood College as far as what they call the core? Like Hood College has what they call this core, which I never knew what it meant when I went into teaching. But it just means you take cl classes in all these different fields and get a full appreciation. So you take psychology or you take philosophy, math, science. Um, but within the business program, a lot of times when, when someone comes in and I ask them what they want to concentrate in, most, most of them just kind of look at me like, I have no idea. Like, I don't know what marketing is. I, I don't know what human resources is. And I'm like, that's fine. Because the nice thing is within the business program, there's like a core set of classes. Everyone takes marketing, everyone takes accounting, everyone takes finance. Uh, so those are all like the required classes. And then once you're done with the required classes, then you can say, wow, I really like marketing. Uh, I'm a marketing professor, so I put marketing number one there. Uh, usually most people, if they didn't have like the big kind of ego problem idea, would probably do it alphabetically. But marketing was number one. But so if you, if you love marketing, you, you could concentrate on marketing and you can concentrate on two things. Uh, I've had a lot of students come in and say, you know, I, le I really like to concentrate on marketing. There's no way I'm going to do finance. Then they take a finance class and they're like, wow, I don't know what happened, but I actually liked it. So then they'll add finance as a concentration, which is great because that just opens up more, more job possibilities. So again, you can, you know, if, if you come to Hood and you're 80% sure you want to be a business major, you can go ahead and declare a business. Um, but then if you're not sure what your concentration is, don't worry about it take these core classes and you're gonna just kind of know in your heart by the end which one you wanna major in. So again, relax. Um, Peyton, if you wanna to go to the next screen, we'll talk, look at a couple different other majors that kind of fall 
all within the school business, right? So accounting, and a lot of people are like, wow, I'm not, I'm not great at math. The nice thing about accounting is it's just subtraction and addition, and they give you a calculator. So it's not really math. It's more like a kind of understanding the, the concept of whether something's a debit or a credit or things like that. All I can say is that everyone that comes out with an accounting degree has multiple job offers. So I was not an accounting major, but looking back, it would have been pretty tempting knowing what I know. So that they, they almost always get paid internships and they all, there, there's just a heavy demand for accounting. Uh, and again, whether you're an accounting major or a business major, you take the same introductory classes, right? A business major will take accounting, a business major will take um, organization behavior, just like so. You don't have to decide between accounting and business when you go in. Economics, which was uh, the next one, uh, is a little bit more mathematically oriented. That it was my major when I was an undergraduate. Um, and I got a lot of the economic students that go on to graduate school, uh, to get their PhDs, or, or a lot of them end up working for like the Bureau of Labor Statistics and doing those kinds of things. Integrated marketing communications. Right. This, this is a major that's been around only about six or seven years, but it's a, it's a top 10 major at Hood College. Um, talking about top majors, I don't think I even mentioned, I think business is the largest major at Hood College, but integrated marketing is, is, is in the top 10. Um, and really, like a lot of things that happen at Hood College, and something that you can remember as well, is within the business school, I mentioned that there are concentrations. Well, students can create their own concentrations, right? The students can decide, well, I really have an interest in graphics and I have an interest in this and this, and I like to tie them all together with a concentration. That is not a problem. We can sit down and figure out three courses and create a nice concentration. Uh, but integrated marketing communications, that was the whole idea for that actually came from a student, right? Uh, a, a young lady from New Jersey, she came to us and she's like, I really want to major in integrated marketing communications. And I was like, well, that's good. I said, I, but we don't offer that here at Hood College. And she's like, but I looked, we have pretty much all the courses between your communications department and your business department. I think you have all the courses that I really need. And so I sat down with someone from the communications department um, and we went through all the courses and then we compared those courses to what other business schools and like University of Maryland has an integrated marketing communications major. So we looked at Maryland and we're like, wow, we do have all the courses. And, and in some ways, I think I like ours better. Um, and then we ha went ahead and we added a social media marketing class to make it more robust. Um, and we came out with a major that if you're not really that into like the whole math thing, like you're like, ah, I don't want it. accounting, economics, that's not really for me, but I really like marketing and dealing with people and communications and social media marketing. Well, integrated marketing is a great major for you then. Uh, so it, ha it has become popular fairly quickly. And last but not least is the finance major. And again, you've always been able to concentrate in finance if you're a business major. Uh, but starting next year, we will have an official finance major. Um, and again, I think the nice thing about that is very similar to economics. People come out with a finance major in high demand in the job market just because there's not that many people that go into the field. Um, one of our students has had multiple offers, including ones from New York and Los Angeles, and he picked Los Angeles. So he, he, he and his fiance have moved to Los Angeles for his uh, job with a, a hedge fund. All right, so that's a real quick overview. I haven't looked in the chat box. Were there any questions? No? Not yet. Okay, good. I, I, was, I was worried that I was rambling and not answering questions. So that's great. Uh, so I think the next thing, and again, I just mentioned, put this down um, just so I didn't forget it to mention on the agenda was advising. Um, and I think the key thing to remember there is it's not that exciting to talk about advising, even though I will be doing it tomorrow. Um, but I think what is good for all the majors at Hood College, and if you ever like talk to professors at Hood and, they're all, and they all try to tell you how great their major is and they try to talk you into being in their major, don't, don't look at it as a bad thing. I got, look at it as a good thing. I, I think that if someone studies in a field and they love it, they naturally want to share that field with other people. So um, I never get upset when you know, a professor's brag about how great their field is because 
if they don't enjoy it, then I don't think there's any way the students are. So, um, but I think it is important once you kind of like say, well, I think I want to be a business student. What's really nice at Hood College is that you will then be advised by a business professor. Uh, tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to be on the phone an hour each with, I think, four different uh, students that are coming to Hood in the fall. All of them are interested in business. It doesn't mean, I mean, I hope they all love it, and most people do. Um, but they, they, it's definitely their, their first choice. So the nice thing about it is they're going to sit down with a business professor, and, and there's going to be another business professor meeting with other students. And we'll kind of go through, like, what's your interest? What classes should you take, um, you know, based on your your you know, what type of job. It's just, you know, I, I think it's just much more helpful. Um, I had a daughter that went to a very good school, but it was, you know, it's about 5,000 students. And rather than meeting with someone, and she, she was a dual business marketing psychology major. Um, but she met with a different advisor every time she went in, and, but they had an advising building where people just would advise a philosophy major, and then they would advise a math major, and then they would advise a business student. And so they would just, she would just get kind of random classes that happened to be open. Whereas if I sit with a student and, and they're like, wow, they really need this class. If they want to do what they want to do, we'll make sure they get that class. If the class is full, we'll sweet talk the professor into letting them into, as long as it's in the business program, I can pretty much, we can sweet talk professors into those kinds of things. So I think it just gives us a chance to really, you know, figure out a schedule that works for them for the major. Uh, and it's, it's nothing against other majors. If I was trying to, you know, advise a student in, in, in the nursing program, I'd probably, they would probably never become a nurse because I, I just don't know, know all the requirements of what it takes to be uh, a, a very stringent uh, major. So um, that's, that, so advising is easy and, and you'll, you, at the end, it's your schedule, right? You're, you're an adult, you'll pick your own classes, but at least you'll have someone providing, it, providing advice. Um, sometimes I've advised students to do things and they've done the opposite and then they've done fantastic things and then they've been able to say, I told you so. So that's fine. Uh, and I think the last thing we had listed down there was internships, right? And the only reason I brought that up is that I often get students when they visit, drop by for an open house or something like that, they always say, you know, will I get the opportunity to do an internship? Is it possible for me to do an internship when I'm at Hood College? Uh, and the, Truth is that it not only is it possible, but it's a requirement, right? Every business student and every integrated marketing communication student, uh, every accounting student, they, they all have to have an internship. And the awesome thing is that we have a strong career center and they actually have more internships than we have students. I get, an, I get an, typically an email every couple of days from uh, Amani and, and who runs internships, you know, asking, do you have a student interested in this? Do you have a student interested in this? Uh, uh, I, actually, in a, I was on a conference call the other day because they're, 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 again, looking for more students to do internships, which is, is amazing considering that what's going on with the pandemic. Um, so, and it doesn't mean, you know, the, the nice thing about it is that some, some of these internships are absolutely fantastic. And, and the way I look at them is sometimes it's really like a four-year job interview. I mean, a four-month job interview, right? Because you, you, you go to work for a company as an intern and, um, often you know it'll lead to something else but i had someone go to this one company and they're like we could take an intern on but i gotta tell you right now we, we, we're definitely not looking to hire anyone in the next six months to a year i'm like that's fine we're just looking for an intern um and so her, her name was kelsey blackwell and she, and she went and she did an internship there and then they fell in love with her and they hired her as their assistant marketing director so and and she has since been promoted to their the marketing director of a, of a company right here in frederick so you just never know where, where things are going to go with the internships. All right, well, I kind of rambled through those, but I wanted to give time to those people that had questions, even if they're hood people that have questions, feel free. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, like I said, I'll, I'll I'm going to sit in during like the tour of Hood College, the virtual tour and things like that. So if people have questions, but again, my email was on that first screen, which is simply, simply my last name, Van Winter at hood.edu. So I'll be happy to either, you know, exchange emails with you if you want to talk on the phone about like 
I'm kind of interested because a lot of times people have slightly niche areas, you know, I'm interested in starting my own cosmetic brand for people to have this type of skin or something. I'm like, okay, uh, but let's, let, let's talk about that. So, and any question you have, I'm always, always happy to discuss with you. Hey, Jerry, um, one of the students had a question. What are, uh, when are internships usually uh, typically completed? That is a great question. They are not allowed to the junior year. And the reason we do that is we really want people to have like several business, you know, if someone did it their first year, they would not have all the business classes. They wouldn't have mark, you know, if they're doing a marketing internship, we really want them to have taken a couple of marketing classes. Um, so anytime starting the beginning of the junior year, I usually kind of coach students to wait till second semester junior or beginning of the senior year, just so the companies remember them when they apply for a job. And the other variable there is for athletes, we usually do off season. So if someone plays soccer in the fall, we'll usually do a spring internship just to give them more flexibility. Looks like we have a question which maybe some of our admission team could help, and I'm sure Dr. Van Winter, you know about this as well. Um, are there requirements for study abroad, and would you recommend studying abroad? Sure. Well, if you guys don't mind me jumping on this one, it's one of my favorite topics. Uh, just because I, I don't know, I advise, I guess, about 50 students, but I have a student studying abroad, usually two or three students every semester. Um, Usually the first thing I think of when they tell me they're going to study abroad is that I'm jealous. I, I, I wish I had done it myself. Uh, two, of my, two of my three children studied abroad and, and both of them said it was like their best semester ever. Maybe because they're away from us. I don't know. But um, so there, there, there really isn't any kind of special requirement. I mean, it has to be an approved study abroad program, but there's you know, dozens of those in, 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 in just about every country where you want to go. Um, so there's no special requirement besides the fact that you still need to meet your degree requirements. Um, but we will sit down, like usually students, sophomore, early junior year, will kind of make the decision to just study abroad. And we will sit down and just kind of map out to make sure. And the nice thing is that often when they study abroad, they really only need to take like one or two business classes. I always recommend things like international business or international marketing, because I'm like, you know, what could be cooler than learning marketing, international marketing from a someone that's doing marketing in Spain or, or you know, Australia. Um, but besides that, you know, they, they can take any classes they want really that are of, of interest. But yeah, it's a great, it's a great opportunity and, and students have no problem studying abroad and graduating on time. I do want to add on to that. Um, I mentioned this to, to Faith privately that you, we can pretty much do any program and send you anywhere as long as it's um, safe. <laughs> so as I mentioned to her, North Korea is like probably not going to be an option unless things change. Um, but I don't foresee that happening. But um, and also if we have a if you see a program and we don't offer it, you can definitely make a case for that at Hood. We had a student who wanted to study abroad but didn't really know where she wanted to go. And she found a program that was a study away at sea. So she was pretty much at sea on a boat, going to all these different countries and also studying at the same time. So that's definitely an option. And we added that to our, to our repertoire of study abroad, if you will. So if we don't have a program, no worries. You can find one and make a case for it. And odds are, if it's safe, and if it's approved for your program of study, we can probably make it happen, okay? Any final questions for Dr. Van Winter before we pass to India? And like he mentioned, he'll be around. So if you think of something during the tour, you can certainly pop that into the chat or unmute yourself and we'll be able to have him answer for you. Just going once, going twice. Okay, I think you're up, India. We, hey everyone. Um, as mentioned before, my name is India Dennis. I'm one of the other admission counselors here at Hood. And I'm also a Hood alum. I graduated in 2019. It feels like forever ago because these last six months have felt like a year, but <laughs> it's only been a year ago. Um, so any questions that you have as far as 
living on campus, what it's like to be a student, um, campus life in general, residence life. That's kind of my realm and kind of what you'll get with the virtual tour. Obviously, we want you guys to come and see campus again. So please check out our visits and events page to set up maybe another virtual visit or um, a in-person visit with us. So that way you can have more interaction with the campus because the virtual tour is great, but it doesn't do coming on campus justice. So hopefully bear with me. There are some videos. So if there's a little bit of lagging, I apologize. Um, home Wi-Fi is obviously not the best, but if there is any lagging, I'll kind of make sure that there's a pause there. Um, and if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, if there's a video, I might not be able to get to it right away, but I promise you I will, or someone else will. So let's get started. I want to share my screen and not show my emails. <laughs> okay, let's do it. There we go. Perfect. All right. Can everyone see that okay? Thumbs up if you can see it. Perfect. Awesome. So first, we're going to start with the academics tour, and this is going to show you residential, um, sorry, academic Welcome buildings to in the newly district. renovated Tatum Art Center, which is home to the Hudson Art Gallery, the Departments of Art and Archaeology, Global Languages and Cultures, Psychology, Education, and law and criminal justice. New additions to the building include a moot courtroom and state-of-the-art classrooms. Located on the bottom floor, the Avalon Theater, which is also known as the Black Box, was recently revamped and hosts a lot of Hood College's theater production. Here we are at the Hudson Science and Technology Center, which houses the Departments of Biology, as well as the Departments of Chemistry, Mathematics, Nursing, and Computer Science and Information Technology. Recent renovations here have added additional state-of-the-art equipment and expanded space for the nursing and coastal and watershed study programs. We're here in front of Rosenstock Hall, which houses the departments of economics, English, political science, history, business administration, and communication arts. In addition to numerous classrooms, Rosenstock Hall houses the Hudson Auditorium and the Center for Academic Achievement and Retention. The newest addition to this building is the Virginia Munson Hamill Trading Room, complete with state-of-the-art technology to simulate real work with financial markets. The beneficial Hudson Library features study spaces for individuals in small and large groups. The library supports the research, teaching, and learning needs of faculty and students with access to a substantial collection of magazines, newspapers, and electronic books, as well as access to the Maryland Interlibrary Consortium. Broadbeck Music Hall, the oldest building on campus, houses the music department. Broadbeck features individual practice rooms, as well as a recently renovated concert hall, where recitals and concerts are performed throughout the year. Here in the heart of Hood College is Alumni Hall. Our four columns represent hope, opportunity, obligation, and democracy. In addition to being the main administration building, Alumni Hall houses the departments of social work and sociology. Welcome to Blazer Radio, the voice of Hood College, which gives the students the opportunity to experience a hands-on studio environment. Okay, so coming out, so awesome thing about Hood College and our campus itself is that it's broken up, broken up into thirds. So you're gonna be able to see, kind of navigate the campus a little bit easier than maybe going to a larger school. As you can see in the aerial view, it's very compact. Um, you can walk from one end of the campus to the other in about 10 minutes. So you really don't have a hard time with like getting up and going to the class. And that was something that really kept me motivated to India, your class is two minutes away, get up and go. Um, so as far as like, you know, waking up really late for class because we've all done it before, just get up and go. Um, because like, for example, I lived in Shriner one year and Hudson, I was a biology major. So Hudson Science and Technology where I can look out my window and see it. So I could just hop out and put some sweats on, brush my teeth and go to class. So that's something that's really awesome about it and with it being broken up into thirds um all pretty much all of your academic buildings are on this third of the campus so 
if you're looking for, you know, Tatum as a first year and you're at Shriner Hall, then you're at the residential half and then you can kind of figure it out. That was something that I've done before. So I'm just, you know, warning students now. But things that I want to highlight with the academic buildings is one, um, as you can see in the video, that every building kind of has some sort of hands-on opportunity or hands-on um, room or space for you to kind of get that in-classroom interaction of things that you might be dealing with in the real world. So for example, if you're into art, um, you're obviously going to have your art studios in this building as you saw in the videos, so you'll be able to interact with art. Um, in Rosenstock, which is very pertinent to you all, um, like if you're interested in, you know, TV broadcasting, we have a TV broadcasting studio inside. We also have the trading room. Um, so you're really going to be able to get those in-class interactions before you're going out into your field and you kind of might have a little bit of an advantage of oh i've you know i've seen this or maybe on a smaller scale you've seen something that you can kind of be like yeah that'll jog my memory and help your learning process with internships or going out into the real world when you get your job um also for students you know who are interested in more club-like things we have blazer radio in the basement of alumni hall so for students who want to have their own radio show um or you know learn how to dj and things like that you're able to have that hands-on interaction. Um, another highlight is that the library that you see in the academic portion will not be the same library that you'll see when you're coming, when you're coming in. Um, so we're turning our library into a learning commons. So essentially there'll be a cafe in there, so you'll be able to have coffee, um, you know, and have a snack and study. Also, um, our student success center will be inside of the learning commons. So anything that will make you a successful student, teach you how to study, um, you know, have all the resources, computers, books you may need, textbooks maybe. Um, sometimes I found like textbooks for, you know, literature reviews or something that I was looking, that I was looking for and looking at doing. So anything that you'll need to make you a successful student will be right here in the library. And I think that that's something that's really important. So that way you don't have to go all over campus to find, you know, someone to tutor you in something or to get help troubleshoot your computer if your Wi-Fi is getting, you know, amped up or jacked up. So everything will be right there. So that's something that is really important that I like to highlight. Um, also briefly, I like to highlight Whitaker. You will see more of that on the inside um, later on in the tour, but I do like to highlight it here because this is where you'll find the Career Center, you'll find the Registrar's Office and the Financial Aid Office. So as far as the Career Center is concerned, Dr. Van Winter talked a lot about how they reach out to their students and be like, hey, are you interested in this? You know, do you have a student who's interested in this? You can also go to the Career Center and say, hey, I'm a student who's interested in this. Um, do you have anything? Do you find anything? So you'll be able to have access to the Career Center as well moving forward. Um, and also the Registrar's Office. So this is how you can kind of keep up with credit. If you're like a mad woman like I was, um, I always wanted to figure out like how many credits I had and talking to them and figuring out different things like that. So um, you'll be able to work with the Registrar's Office about figuring out credits as well. Um, and then Whitaker is also our student center. So that's kind of where you'll see the heart of campus. That's where you'll see students hanging out. And I'll talk more about that briefly when we get into kind of the more fun area of that. But academics at Hood is really awesome. All of your professors, advisors from department to department want you to succeed. Um, they want you to reach out to them for help. They want you to, you know, have internships. They want you to have all of these awesome things um, readily available to you. So when you're on campus, you know, when you're looking at other schools, you definitely want to make sure that your professors, your advisors, your peers are all people who want to help you succeed as well as you want to see yourself succeed. Um, so your average class size is about 15 to 17 students. Um, so you're in a smaller class size, so your professors are going to know you by face, by name, if there's something going on. Like I know I've been in class plenty of times where I probably woke up five minutes before class and I look really rough or I'm having a bad day and you know, a professor might pull me aside after class and be like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Or they might send me an email and be like, you know, you were in class today, but you know, what's up? 
So you really kind of have that community feel within your professors, as well as they pretty much check on up on you like they are your friends um, sometimes. And of course, it depends on, you know, it's not a guarantee that every professor will do that. But for the most part, majority of them do. And I think that that's something that's really important um, when you're thinking about where you want to do your four years of college. Um, and that was definitely something that stuck out to me um, when I was applying to Hood. Um, are there any questions about academics? Um, prior to moving forward. I'll leave a moment to type just in case no one wants to, you know, vocalize that. India, we did have a question about if we accept AP scores and dual enrollment credit. And I did answer this in the chat, but just to highlight, we do accept AP scores that are at a four or a five. And we also accept dual enrollment credit if it's a transferable course and at least a C minus or above. Um, and if you guys have questions about what transferable course is, you can private message me, but it's usually like a core course like English, history, math, um, that's not developmental, so like a math 100. Uh -huh. um, if it's super specific like auto mechanics, that probably will not transfer over, um, but usually a core class will transfer over no problem as long as it's a C minus or above. I just wanted to let everyone know. Thank you. And are there any other questions before moving forward? You guys can thumbs up me if you're just like, go on girl. <laughs> All right, Frick, I see a thumb. Just making sure. All right, so moving on to the residential portion of campus. All five of the residence halls at Hood College have a computer room, a full kitchen, vending machines, a laundry room, and areas with lounge and study space. Colby's Memorial, also known as Memorial Hall, is for incoming transfer and first year students. Men and women are housed in separate floors. Approximately 130 students live in single double and quad rooms. Smith Hall, located next door, is also for incoming transfer and first year students. Welcome to the recently renovated Mary Hall, where upper class students socialize, reside, and study. The building's 140 residents enjoy the ground floor game room. Welcome to Shriner Hall. It's the home of upper class students. They live in single, double, and triple style rooms on two co-ed floors and two all-female floors. Welcome to Koblenz Hall, which doubles as the dining hall on the first floor and the residence hall from the second to the fourth floor. Koblenz is a mixed-sex residence hall with double and single rooms for 120 continuing upper-class students. I'd like to welcome you to the Language House. The three language houses offer an immersive language experience for upper-class students studying German, French, and Spanish. All right, so moving on to residential. Um, before I talk about residential, I just wanted to mention, I always forget this at the beginning, but you do have access to the interactive map. If you type on Google Hood College interactive map, you will find this. Um, and if you click on like the buildings, you can see kind of more pictures that are um, shown in the video a little bit more in detail. Um, and you can also watch the videos over again. Um, that's definitely something that I like to point out just in case you want to kind of go back and see residence halls a little bit more or academics a little bit more. So you do have access to this as well. Um, but moving on to the residential portion of campus, my favorite thing to talk about. I lived on campus all four years of college. Um, first thing to mention, as a first year in all four years, you are allowed to have a car on campus. Um, so that's a really big thing for a lot of students. And as a business major, you know, going into your internships, probably more of your junior year, like Dr. Van Winter said, it's definitely a good idea to maybe have a car if you want to branch out a little bit further. Um, since we are in great areas like Baltimore, we're near great areas like Baltimore and DC, um, and of course the Frederick area. So if you do want to have that boundary to like, branch out a little bit further. That's definitely something, you know, to consider. For me, I didn't have a car all four, all four years, but I still was able to do a lot of on-campus kind of internship opportunity and research opportunity, et cetera. Um, but that's besides the point. 
Also, as far as having cars on campus, it is free. All you need to do is register your vehicle. They'll give you a little tag that you put in your car, and then you're able to park in all of the resident spots. Um, they have, they, they'll donate them, you know, designate, excuse me, commuter spots versus faculty and staff versus um, resident parking. So just make sure that you pay attention to that. Um, but it's free to have a car on campus, and that's great. As you can see, there's parking lots kind of all around you. So there is a lot of places to park as well. Um, so first things first are the two first year residence halls. So this is Memorial Hall and this is Smith Hall. Pretty much on the inside, they look identical um, as far as the way the rooms are structured, the bathrooms are structured, um, the way the common lounge and common areas are structured and the furniture that is in them. Um, let's see, what do you have to do in order to park? Um, in order to park really quick, all you have to do is register your vehicle with Campus Safety. They'll give you a little tag that you put in your car and you're good to go. It's totally free. Um, so back to the first year residence halls, they do look pretty much identical on the inside. Um, and that's really great. So there's not really anything between the two that you're like, mm, which one do I wanna live in? There's not really a major difference between them. I'm biased to Memorial because that's where I live. So I'll say Memorial, but if you ask someone who lived in Smith, they'll say go Smith. Um, so as a first year, your floors will be co-ed by floor. So you will live on an all female floor or an all male floor. And then you'll have a community bathroom that has eight showers, um, eight bathroom stalls and eight sinks. So there's enough space for the entire floor to be able to use the bathroom and have their you know rotations of who's using the shower. It was very rare that I went in there and all the showers were taken. Um, so you kind of have space. Um, also, as far as the floor, you have your chain of command. So, you know, the people who are monitor monitoring your floor, you have your RA, um, who will be, there'll be one on every single floor. And that's a person that you can kind of go to, you know, if you need help, if you're just adjusting the college, if you want someone to just talk to and hang out with. Um, I was always really good friends with my RAs and it's actually really funny. I always ended up living right next door to my RA. So they were always someone that was, I, that was really close to me in my four years. Um, so if I needed anything, if I needed a fork, sometimes even like a pack of ramen, they were always there to kind of just help me out and just to be that helping hand um, with living on campus. So they're also a really great person. They're typically a peer, typically an upperclassman. Um, so sometimes students may feel like they don't want to go to a peer. They, you know, they want more of an adult figure. So we do have area coordinators as well. Um, typically the chain of command is just to go to your RA first and then your RA will help you bring it up to your AC. Uh, but you can also still go to your AC and email your AC just like you do your RA. Um, so if you do have any problems or if there is, you know, anything that you just kind of don't want, you know, your RA to know, you can go to your AC about that. Um, but they're still there to be that adult figure to kind of make sure everything's going smoothly, make sure that you're monitored, you know, you're being monitored, the buildings are going swell, um, and just make sure that you're having a good time and you have a positive living environment, you know, within you and your roommate and within you in the hall. Um, so to kind of keep that up, um, your RAs will have floor meetings, so they'll update you with anything about residence life. Um, they'll, you know, have sometimes they'll do like DIY activities with you and like the lounges or on your floor. Sometimes they'll knock on your door, like during finals, they always do like final snacks. Um, or like, you know, if it's a holiday, like Valentine's Day or something, they might get you little treats that you can have. Um, so they kind of just want to keep you, you know, keep you engaged, keep you incited. They'll knock on your doors and they'll ask you, you know, if you want to go to, um, events with them. Um, since we have like over 500 events on campus, they'll knock on the door and just kind of keep you and push you socially. Um, so your RAs are very important people. Your, ACE, your area coordinators are also very important people and your peers are very important people as well. Um, as far as roommates go, roommate selection is super simple. Um, there is a roommate form. It's pretty much a questionnaire. Um, where you're able to ask questions. They'll ask you questions about your daily routine. So, you know, when do you like to wake up usually? Um, how do you like to keep your room? Do you like it, you know, are you a neat, are you neat? Or do you like your house, you know, your room more like lived in and chill? 
Um, they'll ask you how you feel about having guests and things like that. Um, so you'll be able to kind of give them a little bit of you before, you know, meeting you and you'll be able to be paired with another person. Um, we do have typically for more upperclassmen, um, for your first year, you'll be paired with you and one other person for the most part. Um, we do have accommodations for like single rooms. We also have triple rooms and we have quads as well. Um, but for the most part, at the first year, you'll just live with you and one other person just so you can adjust. And once you come in and you make friends and there are triples and quads and singles available, then you'll be able to branch out more from that. Um, so that's another great thing. As you are meeting friends, you are not binded to that roommate all four years. So you can, you know, have a roommate and they could be great your first year, but you might meet someone else that you want to room with. So you can talk to them about it. Um, you know, and switch your roommates um, as the years go on. So you're never binded to someone in particular. Um, and again, you have other living options. And then as you move up from the first year residence halls, you'll be moving on to your upperclassmen residence hall. So we have Shriner Hall, Myron Hall, Copeland Hall, and our new residence hall that is coming up. Um, it should be finished by fall of 20. So it's going to be really awesome, really excited. These five residence halls are your traditional residence halls. So, you know, they have primarily double rooms, community bathrooms on each floor, common areas. And then the new residence hall will be more of that suite style. So sharing, having kind of two doubles and sharing that common area. Um, there will be a lounge and study spaces in there as well. So as an upperclassman, as a first year moving into an upperclassman position, there will be an open house. Um, so all of the RAs will kind of like tell all the upperclassmen, hey, we want the first years to come in so they can get a feel for all the residence halls and see which one that they like best. Obviously, as you're making friends, you know, you'll make upperclassmen friends and you'll be able to go, you know, in their residence halls and see, but there will be some sort of an open house where you can see the insides of each of these buildings and see which one is right for you. You know, you might say, I really don't, want to be in a really new residence hall. I kind of just like the traditional vibe and you may just pick one of these three, um, but you will have that option. And then that's pretty much how residence life goes. It's really awesome to live on campus. Um, and even if you know, you're know you in that 30 mile radius and you decide that you want to commute on campus, um, you're still going to be able to be in the loop. You're still going to be able to make friends. You're still going to be able to go to the same events. You're still going to get the same emails. So you won't feel like you're, you know, out of the loop with that. And as far as transfers, we do have um, transfer rooms as well as for students. So you will also have the opportunity where you can live on campus as well. Um, and you know, you might choose anything else. So you can choose any five of these or the six once you're an upperclassman, and then you'll live in one of these two as a first year. Any questions? I just throw a lot at you. <laughs> going once, going twice. All right. Hood College competes in the Middle Atlantic Conference, which is part of the NCAA Division III. Known as the Blazers, our varsity and club teams use several venues on campus. The Ronald J. Volpe Athletic Center houses the bb &T Arena, as well as a gym complete with weightlifting and cardio equipment available for all students, faculty, and staff. The center also houses the athletic department and the Shimano Athletic Training Room, where hood athletes receive treatment and rehabilitation. Welcome to the Nicodemus Athletic Complex. It includes the Thomas Athletic Field, where many of the Blazers teams compete. The softball field features an updated playing surface and seating accommodations for fans. The tennis complex features six new courts and a shaded spectator area. Right next door, the Huntsinger Aquatic Center houses an eight-lane, 25-yard heated pool where the swim teams compete. The pool is also available to good students, faculty, and staff during open swimming hours. Gambrel Gymnasium is used for dance, yoga, and some physical education classes. It also serves as a secondary practice facility for all sports, indoor and outdoor. Okay. 
All right. Escaping out of that and going to athletics. So first things first for student athletes that I kind of want to recommend and make sure that you do. Um, if you are interested, if you are an athlete and you're interested in playing and continuing in college, I always recommend that if you haven't been in contact with coach to get in contact with the coach of your sport of choice. Um, and you can do that by going on to the Hood Athletics website. Um, and there is a recruit me questionnaire where you're able to answer and that will submit you, you can fill out all the answers and answer all of the questions that they have and that'll be submitted to the coach and get you in that pool and then when they get to your name they'll reach out to you and you guys can start your communication that way um, so that's something that I definitely want to mention for student athletes so that way you can start getting more information about what that looks like um, and being more of a student athlete here at Hood um, so the Volpe Center or BB&T um, is a place for us to obviously go and watch games. Also, there's a fitness gym inside like you saw in the video. So as a student, it is free for you to go and use the fitness gym. Um, you know, you go in there, it's very nice. There are cardio machines on the second floor and on the first floor, there are all the weight machines. Amy and I used to go together all the time and now we don't because we're virtual, but it is a very nice gym. Um, they keep up with it really well. So, you know, making sure you're cleaning up after yourself and keeping it very nice and spotless and free is the best thing that we can do. Also, yes, 10 out of 10 would recommend the gym. Um, also, it's really fun. There are windows in the kind of in the cardio area. So if you are running and there's a game on the turf, you'll be able to see it. So I used to like going and watching the game when I'm running because it was more of a distraction. So if there is a fall sport or a spring sport going on and you want to watch a game and you kind of don't want to sit outside, you can do that from the gym. Um, also, there is for athletes, we have the athletic trainers inside of the Volpe Center. So, you know, if you're hurt or if you need to just do some stretches or anything like that, um, you're able to go inside, of, inside and get you know, some training. Um, so they'll do like ice baths, they'll do wraps. Like I know my friend, she had like some ankle problems. She's a swimmer. Um, so she kind of went and got like braced up from them and stuff. So you're able to be taken care of right here on campus. And also we do have the turf field here. So if you're watching a game or if you are an athlete, you'll be very familiar with this. Um, I actually got to use the turf in one of my PE courses that I took. I was not a student athlete but I tried. <laughs> um, I definitely tried to be active in any sort. So I took like a basic conditioning course and we did a lot of outdoor workouts on the turf. I did a lot of running back and forth on the turf and a lot of losing my breath too. But <laughs> it's very awesome. Fun fact, it's always 10 degrees hotter on a turf. So be prepared for that. Um, so you can go if there aren't any practices going on and kind of just do some recreational play, you know, shooting around, run a couple laps if you want as well, but just make sure you're not disrupting any practices. Um, and then of course over here, we have the tennis complex linked to the pool. So again, you're able to kind of go, if there aren't any practice and, you know, play tennis, you can also, there are hours for the pool, um, a little bit more limited than the fitness gym, but we do have hours for the pool where you can go in and swim. Um, and it's only a little bit more limited because we do have some high schools and some middle schools who practice there. Um, so you can go in and have a swim with friends. You can also take like aqua Zumba. Um, you can take um, a swimming course if you want to learn how to swim better. Um, that's also an option as well. And then Gamble Gym. This is where a lot of your PE classes will be. Um, so if you want to have some fun, yes, you can take aqua Zumba for a college credit. I did, and I was also the Aqua Zumba TA while I was in college, so it's really fun. Totally 10 out of 10 would recommend that class, um, but I've taken self-defense in Gambrel, um, so I learned all about, you know, defending myself um, and a lot of mixed martial arts and techniques and scenarios that we kind of played with, and I got to learn a really, really good bit of stuff, which is really awesome. Also, my basic conditioning course, that we did do some indoor when it was raining. So using that, we have like badminton, um, tennis, PE courses are required. I believe it's two credits, but again, there are like 
a list of them. There are also some more like sit-in health courses if you don't want to be active, but I decided to be active, um, you know, with that, just to kind of give myself a break from sitting in class for a lot of time. Um, so you can have yoga, you can take, um, there are like women's health classes and there are a whole bunch of other health classes that you can take as well if PE is not your thing. So there are a list of classes that you can take for that. Um, but they're all really fun. Like I said, yoga was my favorite. It was one of my last classes that I had for the day. So I could go and like relax and then take a nap because normally that's what I would do. And then I would be able to get up and be refreshed and study or, you know, go hang out with friends and stuff like that. So PE is very fun and it gives you a little bit of a break um, from, you know, your strenuous or rigorous courses. Um, any more questions about athletics? All right, and our last lay, do it, not. Today we are at Whitaker Campus Center. Oh, here we go. Mission of being the student center, Whitaker includes a bookstore where students can buy school supplies along with hood gear. This is also where you'll find students studying, eating at the blazer, relaxing and playing games, including ping pong and pool. Welcome to the Joseph Henry Apple Resource Center. Here you will find the registrar's office, the financial aid office, the graduate school admission office, and a 24-hour computer lab. Your Hood College journey begins at the admission house. Here you will interview, meet campus tour guides, and apply to become a Hood student. Our dedicated staff works year-round to help you with anything you may need in the process. Alumni Hall, the main administrative building on campus, houses the offices of the president, provost, dean of students, treasurer, accounting, marketing. Here in Alumni House, the alumni relations staff keeps in touch with Hood College graduates, raises money for the college, and organizes events such as homecoming and reunion each year. The dining hall, on the first floor of Coburn's, provides a daily breakfast, lunch, and dinner to all of the Hood community. Featuring a variety of choices from chicken nuggets to stir fry, there is always something good to eat. The Georgian style Kaufman Chapel seats 750 guests. Hood holds non-denominational services here every Wednesday. With a capacity of nearly 2,000 people, the Hudson Outdoor Theater holds campus-wide events, including the opening convocation each August. The Andrew G. Truxel Pergola is the center point of the residential quad. The pergola is covered in wisteria and has inspired several Hood traditions. The residential quad holds commencement each year, along with campus picnics and festivals. Students can be found here all year round. Here at Carson Cottage is where a lot of Hood's music majors spend their time. Hood's student-run newspaper, The Blue and the Gray, operates inside along with Hood's student-run literary magazine, Wisteria. Constructed in 1900, Hood College originally purchased the property for use as residence for the vice president. As of 2015, East Cottage now serves as the home for the current president. All right, so now that we're back at more of the aerial view of campus, we'll talk briefly about events and campus life um, with our points of interest tour. So you saw a lot of our administrative buildings, but also some of our student epi points of the campus. So like I mentioned before, Whitaker Campus Center is our student center along with the Joseph Henry Apple. There, those buildings are connected so you can get from one building to the other within it. Um, so Whitaker is a really great place to talk about um, campus events and fun things that go on in camp on campus. Um, every Wednesday we have Whitaker Wednesday where we play different games or we have different activities. So anything from like karaoke, um, open mic nights, minute to win it games, bingo, which is a really big um, campus game for us where you can win prizes. Um, we've turned Whitaker into like a carnival um, and they're like carnival games and prizes you can win. So you can always look 
to Whitaker to have something to do, to hang out with friends, to study, to eat. It has our second and third options other than Copeland's Dining Hall. Um, as a first year, you'll have the all access meal plan, which means you have unlimited swipes in the dining hall. So when the dining hall is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you can go pretty much every 30 minutes to eat if you want. I don't recommend doing that because that's a lot of food, but that's basically what the all access meal plan means. You'll also, that also means for Blazer, which is our second and third option, so Grill Works and the Sandwich Shack, you'll be able to have meal exchanges. So you can exchange a swipe in the dining hall for one of the um, combos at one of the two um, places to eat. So you can get from Grill Works, like chicken tenders, fries, and a drink, which was my favorite meal. Um, or you could get, um, you know, a, pati a panini, um, a drink, and like a bag of chips or an apple from the sandwich shack. So you have meal exchanges. And then if you don't want a full meal, you'll also have $100 in Blazer Bucks. And it's all on your student ID. So your student ID is going to be very important to you. Guard it with your life. Um, so you'll be able to get something small. So let's say I'm running to class and I just need a bite so I could grab an apple or grab a, some fries or, you know, grab a drink. And I'll be able to just swipe it and pay for it like it's real money and go. The, Best thing to do is not be like me when I found out that I had blazer bucks and like blow through all your blazer bucks in like two weeks. Um, <laughs> but, because I just really, really like chicken tenders. But the good thing now is that you have meal exchanges and you'll have five of those. We didn't have meal exchanges when I came in my first year. So that saved me big time. Um, but moving on to other things on campus. So the quad. Um, so you saw the pergola. The quad is also another really fun place where events go on. So we have a lot of outdoor activities. So we'll have like big uh, student organization fairs where you'll kind of get out and you'll be able to see all of our, almost all of our 60 active clubs on campus if they're able to participate. Um, so you'll get to see what kind of clubs are out there. You'll have games, there's food, there's music. Um, you know, they'll have like big inflatables. I remember one year they had like human hungry, hungry hippos and you're able to like, you know, eat the, the balls with, and you go against other, other students and stuff. So there's a lot of fun things to do there. Um, of course, the admission house, always come and see us. We'd love to see you. Come and say hi to us. Um, come and be a tour guide. I was a tour guide. It's really, really fun. So always you're always welcome to come and get more information from us um you know come for an in-person visit um you know come and see our what the buildings look like step on campus keep coming back visit again and visit again and visit again before making your decision and it's so great that you guys are starting this early um at least with the virtual visit so that way you're able to start getting that feel um of what kind of school you're looking for so if you do have any questions for us please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us on the camera or um, online through our virtual events and our visit, our visits and events page. That was a tongue twister. Um, but I will stop talking and open up the floor for any questions. While you're thinking of a question, uh, I would just want to thank everybody for their presentations for Dr. Jim Van Winter and India uh, and Peyton's help and Amy's help uh, and and thank you for all visiting. What I want to do, I, I just want to invite you really to this is well this this event has been great to have you here, but you heard uh, it's a lot of of hood. It's sort of like uh, you're standing there and we're hitting you with a, a fire hose of hood. Uh, and and that's that's one way to do it. But we're what we're really interested in, in as a next step would be to get to know you uh, and to have the opportunity to to really sit down and talk with you, uh, whether you want to do it virtually or if you want to come to campus 
and talk with us because we do have in-person uh, face-to-face visits and we'll, we'll walk you around campus. One of our counselors will talk with you uh, about what your interests are uh, and what your passions are and what you want to do and, and help you figure out is Hood going to be a right place for you? Because uh, Hood's not the right place for everybody. It's a fantastic place and people fall in love as soon as they get here. But we want you to be sure of what's here. Uh, and that it would be the right place for you and, and fit your needs. So we would encourage you as you're able to take a look at, at your schedule and when you want to come visit in person, let us know. Uh, you, can, you can schedule a visit uh, through the website and through an individual visit, daily visit, and we're happy to, happy to have you here uh, and, and really get to know you because that's the most important part, right? You hear a lot about us, but we want to hear a lot about you. Um, so, and we'll also, when you, when you come, we can also arrange for you to, to have some conversation time with some of our faculty, whether it's Dr. Van Winter, another one of the business faculty, or if you have an interest in another academic department, we can arrange that as well. Uh, if you want to talk with our folks in financial aid, they also are available. And also very important, if you want to talk to our folks in the Career uh, Center, the Career Services Office, it is really here to help you to get to where you want to go after this. It's wonderful to come to Hood, but that's not an end. This is just a means to get to what's going to be next. Uh, and the faculty can be very helpful in that regard and, and are, as well as the folks in the career services area. They're super helpful uh, in help setting things up, talking about grad schools, talking about uh, GREs or GMATs or, uh, you know, any kind of the post-graduate post, uh, work that you might be interested in and, or, or just going right into the job market and help you get a job. I'll let you go. If you have questions, uh, these folks are here to, to answer them. Uh, they will tell you lots of good stuff. Uh, and, and they're eager to hear about you too when, when we have that opportunity. We actually did have a question and um, 